Tesla releases a Cybertruck with some surprise cargo. Segway enters the power sports market with hybrid machines and eye-popping horsepower. Plus, the 2019 AMS Oil GNCC Series wrap-up and Yamaha's XTR Challenge. Hey guys, welcome back to ATV On Demand News. Today we're going to take a close look at Tesla's Cyberquad, including some interesting comments from Yamaha. We'll dig deep into the new Segway Snarlers and check out Yamaha's Extreme Terrains Challenge. But first, let's take a look at the 2019 series finale of GNCC Racing. The 2019 Amsoil GNCC series ended with a bang, or more appropriately a splash, on October 26th at Ironman Raceway in Crawfordsville, Indiana, where steady rain made for some of the most treacherous conditions the GNC series saw all year. With the XC1, Pro 4x4, and WXC champions already crowned, the biggest storyline was the battle for second in the XC1 class. Bryson Neal managed to hang on to fifth for the day, giving him a two-point advantage over Chris Borich for second overall in the series. Hunter Hart clinched his first ever overall XC1 Pro Class win, and Robbie Pecoreri battled through the slop for the 4x4 Pro Class win. ATV On Demand would like to extend congratulations to the 2019 Amsoil GNCC National Champions. Yamaha factory racer Walker Fowler took his fifth straight national championship, and Tracy Pickens, also with factory support from Yamaha, took her 12th WXC national championship. Can-Am factory racer Landon Wolf clinched his first GNCC 4x4 Pro ATV National Championship in round 12 of the GNCC series. Wolf notched an incredible 10 wins and dozen podiums in 13 rounds. Landon Wolf recently published an article on some of his background in GNCC racing. You can find his full story on ATVOnDemand.com or his Facebook page at Facebook.com slash Landon.Wolf25. On Thursday, November 22nd, Tesla released their brand new Cybertruck, looking like a vehicle you'd expect to see from a 1980s action movie. For off-road enthusiasts, the biggest surprise came at the end of the presentation, when Tesla's Elon Musk unveiled the Tesla Sport ATV, called the Cyberquad. The general shape, lines, and suspension geometry on the machine appear strikingly similar to the Raptor 700, so we reached out to Yamaha to find out if they had anything to do with Tesla's chassis, and this is what Yamaha told us. We have no affiliation with the ATV concept Tesla recently unveiled, but it's not surprising they might take cues from Yamaha's Raptor 700, as it's been the best-selling sport ATV for many years now. We couldn't have said it better ourselves. With no noise and the fact that it charges in the back of the Cybertruck, it goes without saying that Tesla's ATV is electric-powered. This could certainly mean incredibly rapid acceleration. The Cybertruck does 0-60 to 60 in a claim 2.9 seconds, and most likely a very linear power curve. The two-wheel drive machine is clearly chain-driven. Suspension on the Tesla features reservoir-equipped shocks front and rear. We've seen some images of the machine that make it look as though the shocks have at least compression adjustment, although it's difficult to tell for sure. Dual A-arm suspension is used up front, with gullwing-style lower arms for maximum ground clearance. The swing arm on the solid axle rear end appears to be well built, perhaps of cast aluminum due to the lack of any discernible weld lines. A round housing style chain adjustment system features two sets of dual pinch bolts, as we would expect to find on a modern sports machine. The lever on the right side of the 1 and 1 ace handlebars is accompanied by a brake master cylinder. There's a brake pedal on the right side as well, so we'd assume the Cyberquad featured independent front and rear brakes. As an electric-powered ATV, we wouldn't expect a standard shift or 5 or 6-speed gearbox as you would find on most gas-powered sport ATVs. The lever on the left side of the handlebar, where a clutch lever would be on a manual shift ATV, appears to have a brake line running to it, so we would assume it's a parking brake. The seat features an extremely long, flat design which wraps around the sides of the machine, which should make it easy to move around and grip with your knees. However, the handlebars look pretty low. Visual inspection leads us to believe that the seat to foot peg relationship is more in line with what we would expect to find on a standard sport ATV, drawing comparisons once again to the Yamaha Raptor 700. The foot pegs look wide and comfortable, and the heel guards appear well sorted. However, the lack of any front bumper or rear grab bar make the machine seem incomplete for serious off-roading. While the seat and rear fenders appear off-road ready, the smallish front fenders and rather broad, flat front end bodywork looks a bit like an afterthought. Obviously, Kenda Bearclaw tires, intended for 4x4 ATVs, appear a little out of place for those of us off-roaders in the know. Perhaps they were chosen to be more aesthetically pleasing for the tech geeks in attendance. The geometric shaped wheel covers look a bit out of place on an ATV of today, but if they're light and keep mud out, they could certainly grow on us. 
With zero detectable excitement for the Sport Quad segment coming from any of the major manufacturers in the power sports industry, we're hoping Tesla sees an opportunity in a neglected corner of the market. With the Cybertruck starting at a price point that's very competitive with 4x4 gas-powered vehicles of today, Tesla could be getting ready to release a Sport ATV that's not only competitively priced, but will open up riding opportunities in more densely populated areas. Maybe even your own backyard. So we want to know what you think. Is the Cyberquad a concept vehicle or does Elon Musk have the cojones to release a sport ATV for neglected enthusiasts in the face of an industry that could seemingly care less? We certainly hope it's the latter. And we'll definitely be bringing you all the details as they become available. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. ATV on the Man would like to say a huge thanks to James Cloffin who allowed us to use his videos from the Tesla release. You can check out both of his Cyberquad ATV videos and the rest of his videos on his channel in the link in the description. On November 5th, Segway, the company that brought you self-balancing scooters, released their Power Sports lineup, featuring the Fugelman Utility Side-by-Sides, the Villain Sport Side-by-Sides, and Snarler ATVs. We touched on the Side-by-Sides and Segway's naming convention in this month's episode of UTV On Demand News, so today we're going to take a closer look at the Snarler ATVs. Segway has certainly taken some notes from the market with their 570 single and 1000cc twin that come in different Snarler models. The single cylinder 570cc engine creates 46 horsepower and 38 foot pound of torque and comes in a single seater or two up option. The 570AF-S is the single seat version with a 51.2 inch wheelbase and the 570AF-L is the two up with a 57.1 inch wheelbase, a rear passenger seat and elevated passenger floorboards. The 570 AFS overall dimensions are 84.6 inches of length, 49.2 inches wide, and 60.6 .6 inches tall, with a seat height of 36.6 .6 inches. Add about 6 inches in total length for the 570 AFL. All of the 570 models feature dual A-arm suspension front and rear, with 7 inches of travel up front and 8.3 inches rear. Interestingly, the 570cc single can be paired with an electric motor that Segway calls the Permanent Magnetic Synchronous Motor, or PMSM, which boosts the horsepower to 86 and the torque to 71 foot-pounds. The hybrid snarler is only available in the 570AH model with the extended chassis. The 570 machines weigh 792 pounds and 842 pounds respectively, but adding the PMSM pushes the dry weight to a hefty 1,012 pounds. The Snarler also comes with the twin-cylinder 1000cc power plant in the Snarler 1000AF, which produces a whopping 107 horsepower and 72 foot-pound of torque. The 1000AF is only available in the extended chassis, giving it room for a rear passenger with a 58.6-inch wheelbase, 92.5 inches in total length, 50.4 inches wide, and a 61-inch total height. The seat height on the 1000 AF is claimed to be slightly lower than the 570 models at 35.8 inches, and weighs in at 979 pounds dry. Suspension travel is slightly increased on the 1000 AF to 7.9 inches up front and 9.2 in the rear. All of the Snarler models feature smart electric power steering with three modes of varying assistance, on-command two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, and the same smart commanding system as the side-by-sides that connect you to your vehicle's information via a smartphone app. The rack capacities on all of the Snarlers are 88 pounds up front and 176 pounds rear. Rear differential lock is optional, along with steel or aluminum beadlock wheels on either 25 or 26 inch tires. Segway has said they intend on bringing their power sports lineup to the North American market sometime in 2020. We still have questions about price point and dealer network, and we'll bring you those details as soon as they become available. Last month, Yamaha rolled out the red carpet, along with some major mud and off-road obstacles for Grizzly, Wolverine, and YXZ owners at the second annual Yamaha Extreme Terrain Challenge, held at the iconic Loretta Lynn Ranch in Hurricane Mills, Tennessee. Yamaha's XTR Challenge, now an annual celebration of fun, family, and superior off-road capability, put YXZ1000R and Wolverine side-by-side -side drivers and their co-pilots up against the demanding natural and man-made obstacles, while spectators cheered them on. This year, Yamaha Grizzly owners also got in the mix, kicking off Saturday's festivities through rugged and diverse trails in Tennessee Hill Country. Yamaha is already planning the next Extreme Terrain Challenge, and dates will be announced in early 2020. For more information on Yamaha's XTR event and the XTR editions of the Grizzly, Wolverine, and YXZ, check out the full story on ATVOnDemand.com. Alright guys, it's that time again. Time to take a look 
into the comments section of the last month of ATV On Demand videos. Tom Selleck says, when are those butt wads over there in the land of the rising sun going to give us a 1,000cc ATV? Ah uh, yes, well I'm sure that particular brand of flattery is definitely going to help your case. We plan on diving into that particular topic in the near future. Ozzy Tapanez, nice beard. Thanks Oz. Dune YXZ says, the beard, lol, looks like a big bush of pubes. Nick A says, well aside from what everyone else is wanting, ATV On Demand, what are you wanting out of the top brands in the near or to come future? Wow, no one ever asks us what we want to see. We want to see an affordably priced sport quad, not necessarily a race bike, but a sport oriented machine that's going to appeal to the younger market. Not everyone can afford a $25,000 side by side or a $15,000 four wheeler, and we don't want to see people getting into trouble by financing their fun. A lower cost machine is less risk and less loss, but we still want it to be super exciting on the trails. Alright guys, that wraps up another edition of ATV On Demand News. We want to hear your thoughts on the Cyberquad and the new Segway machines. And as always, leave us a comment with your thoughts and suggestions. Remember you can see all of this month's features at ATVOnDemand.com. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you again in December. 